Hey everybody, it's Paulie here from Hard Drive Radio. Thanks for checking us out today. I am very excited to have Tommy Vex and Doc Coyle, Bad Wolves, in the studio. How's it going, guys? Good. What's up? Very good. Very good. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate you guys dragging your asses out here way too early in the morning to come talk to me. Listen, it's our pleasure, okay? You know, in between you, you have a great pedigree of, of bands behind you. Uh, Tommy, you know, I first uh, learned of you from Westfield Massacre. Doc, um. you know, you were in God Forbid for years, and you guys were both killing it, and... The fact that you are together and playing music is is probably the most exciting thing for me this year alone. Oh, thanks. Well, it's, it, I'd say it's not know. really exciting for us because we've been <laughs> we've been jamming in band since when do we start jamming? Two thousand four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he you, well he guessed it on God Forbid track uh, called Soul Engraved. Did some guest vocals and then we started jamming. Yeah, yeah. But it's been one of those things where we've like done like a cover band here and there, but it's like trying to work a project where we actually. Be, do an original project and together. it's timing too like what they were like you know they were just like living in different places and having all the right guys and i think um you know john from devil driver x devil driver drummer he he kind of founded the band and he kind of when he came to us uh and we started working together he already had laid the groundwork and we were both kind of available and it just kind of seemed to fall into place plus john we've been been best friends since two, like 2004 and john and doc how you guys have been really tight for a really long time and i've known john for 10 years from touring with snot and devil driver and like so it just kind of you know became this like concatenation of like metal dudes i think it's pretty common in the music business when especially when you're on the road with a bunch of people that you really get along with everyone always tells that oh we should do something together sometime mm -hmm. but it rarely actually happens mostly because of timing so the fact yeah, that yeah. this came together at the perfect time that it did i think uh it speaks to to the power of what you guys have laid out in front of you here thanks we hope uh, people like it uh the album is disobey and that's coming out in may tell me uh a little bit about you know writing these songs together how much time did you spend writing this bulk of work? Um, well, I came in, so John started demoing about two years ago. Even longer. A longer mm -hmm. than um, that, yeah. as so Actually, some of these songs were going to be old Devil Driver songs. Oh, I didn't know that. So yeah, some of those. Doc knows. Yeah, and um, yeah, because I pretty much, when I moved to L.A., it was right around the time he was leaving Devil Driver, and he was already working on a lot of this stuff, and he was going back and forth with different, you know, the songs were really long and progressive, and yeah. then it just developed. They tried out a bunch of singers, but it really coalesced when when Tommy laid, started laying down vocals, and it it the songs got a little bit tighter, more hook oriented, yeah. and, and uh, then learn like learn to live was the first song that we did collaborated together, but it was a throwaway track. So basically, John was helping me manage Westville Massacre at the time, and I. I basically asked him to help write songs for the second album because the first album was written with Bill Hudson and Tim Young. And so the, so I, going into the second record, I was like, hey, I know you're writing all these songs. Do you have anything? you know?" And he was like, yeah, I, I don't really like this song. And then I sent it back to him. He was like, dude. He's like, oh, I got, I got like 12 songs. <laughs> and then we just went into the studio. And then I think at the end of the day, when the band, from, the, from you know, the band has been f fully formed since last year. Uh, and we did like 24 songs all together and picked the best 13 to make the record, you know, and it just kind of is, uh, it's good. I mean, it's just, I think, I don't know, like, I feel very, very grateful because I listen to these guys in their other bands. And so I'm super uh, grateful to be able to work with them. And, and I think what they did creatively, you know, they were really inspired by like Faith No More and kind of changing the boundaries of, of of uh doing something new that they hadn't already mastered i think like bands like god forbid and devil driver um really mastered what they did you know that that traditional metal sound um and then this was kind of we were like how could we take it a step further and it pushed me out of my comfort zone you know so it's been a really really cool experience i say you know the fact you said learn to live was a throwaway track really blows me away because that's that's one of the first songs i heard from you guys and I was completely blown away by it. I was like, this thing's a freaking rager, man. Oh, like, right I on. wanted to bang my head through my desk. It was so good. Me too. Yeah, I think one of the things with that track was, you know, when you're an artist, sometimes you're almost too close to the material. And John had written the music pretty much all on his own. And he, w some of the other stuff was a little more out there. And so I th think he thought it was too straightforward. Yeah, but yeah. that's what we like, you know. And then I noticed just playing songs for people, that song really stood out. People are like, oh. 
like it's like a dog with their ears perk up like what's that song and then yeah. so we were like yo that should be the first single and it pretty much set up everything that came after it uh the single right now is your cover of zombie by the cranberries and this thing has just blown up immensely i mean it's like a number one download in like 20 different countries i think there's over 17 in 40 million it went number one in 40 countries 40 countries yeah holy i mean yeah i mean we, you guys you know, gotta be blown away by that success uh it's a lot yeah well it's you know it's bittersweet you know because we would have you know like dolores was scheduled to sing on the song and i'm sure that if she had the same thing would be happening and it's really a testament to her songwriting you know we're very very grateful that she you know she, that we sent her the song for her approval and that she loved it so much she wanted to be a part of it you know and that i think we're also really grateful that people are digging uh, our rendition of it you know um so it's been a, it's been like a, you know it's been a roller coaster of, of mixed emotions you know and you guys did the super classy thing, which was to donate all the proceeds from that song to her children. I mean, that's pretty much the greatest thing that could ever come out of this. I don't know if it's. I I think it's you. We it's the only. It was it's the, the only, only way. If we didn't do that, we were shelving the song, and it would never have seen the light of day. It's not. You know, we're not. You know, uh, it's not like some cash grab. We're not here to capitalize on something. You know what I mean? It was a tragic thing, and I'm a Cranberries fan. You know those those records. You know I was I I was into metal early on, but I was alternative got me first when I was a kid. And you know those some of those songs kind of fo like influenced my formative years as a as a, a novice songwriter. You know, and so what what better way to pay tribute to her? You know, and then to to try to give back. You know, you guys are hitting the road this summer. You're doing some dates with uh, your guys in Five Finger Death Punch. Yes. Uh, Tell me about, you know, because, you know, you and Zoltan go back a, a long way, and I'm sure he knows all of you guys. We toured. I toured with uh, Five Finger in 2010 and 2012. So. so, I mean, this is like probably just going on the road with friends. This is probably like the best scenario there is, right? Yeah, it's real. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, sometimes it doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? Like, we're, you know, the, the label and the management is like, okay, we got this tour, and we're like, wait, what? Like, you know. So, you know, we're going to, we go out and with, uh, with Five Finger and Shine Down and Star Set uh, in May, and then we're doing the month of May, and then we have another. We have some tours, in, intermittent tours, uh, and then we do Five Finger, Breaking Benjamin, Nothing More, you know, in July through September, you know, for like six weeks, and then we have more touring coming up. So you know, it's like, uh, you know, it, it feels like. You know, we're a baby band, but I think, you know, both because we're all veterans and we've kind of been uh, in the in the in the industry for a long time, it doesn't feel too weird. But it's weird that we're a new band and we're getting these opportunities. But it's also, you know, it's also um, the I think the opportunities that have presented themselves to us have a lot to do with uh, being a part of the right team and having the right managers. You know, Zoltan is a, obviously that was a no brainer. Um, and 10th Street is backing, you know, is backing them up, and we're on 11.7 Records, and it's just like the way that they do things is very forward-thinking, um, and it's exciting to be a part of and to, like, learn and understand why they're kind of at the forefront of rock labels and what they're doing is different, um, and they're more looking towards the future of the music industry and keeping rock alive, and so, you know, we're I'm very, very grateful to be a part of that you know what i mean and the, and people who think and work and act like that because that's what we want to be we want to move forward into the future we're doing this thing so it's cool it's really cool before we wrap up here anything you'd like to say to your fans watching this video go ahead i mean i think for the guys in bad wolves the the, the main theme i think with us is just gratitude you know the, mm -hmm. the fact that we've had um so much happened for us so early you know in terms of you know signing with a, a great record label getting great management um obviously the success with some of the you know the songs that's, that's going on and just uh seeing the forward momentum and 
And the thing is now, because we're in the social media age, we get to hear from everyone directly. So we get to get the compliments and the love and the appreciation directly from people. And it's it's very intense. And that's just very hard to believe when you're such a new band. So it's, um, mm. you know, every day it's something new. It's a little overwhelming, but my main focus is just gratitude. And when you, and when you, when you are grateful about something, all you want to do is just work harder and do more and, um, and try and be present, I think, for the people that support what you do. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and I, th I think to just add to that, it's like, you know, the success of Zombie is like, is fueled by the fans. You know, the people voted for this. You know, they were like, we want to hear this. We hit a lot of road bumps, you know, uh, tr like at first it, it felt like radio didn't want to pick up another cover you know, or they were just not into it. And some people were on board and some people weren't. And we're like, all right, you know, well, you know, but the, the, the sales numbers and the streaming is the, the metrics on it were like insane. And people basically every time they downloaded it or, or, or they streamed it, they basically voted for it, you know? And so the industry kind of responded and, um, you know, I'm a big like I'm I'm an old hardcore guy. I grew up playing shows in CBGBs, and I think we we all we we really appreciate the of the people for the people by the people because we're we're like grimy heavy metal touring musicians. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're not used to this. So it's like a win for one is a win for all. So like this is not you know ha having a you know having had a metal band do a song that went number one on iTunes. You know in overall not you know beating artists like drake and kelly clarkson it's a big deal you know it's a big deal for rock it's not about us it's about our genre overall saying like we fucking deserve to be recognized you know what i mean yes and we're grateful to be a part of that kind of that thing that's been happening with that so you know and 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 we want to see more bands doing the exact same thing yeah hopefully we can know? bring some people along you know as, yeah. as our friend jamie justice says high tide raises all ships so i was mm -hmm. just gonna say the same damn yeah. thing mm -hmm. yes uh, a great a great band like you guys coming along and really bringing awareness to rock and metal is absolutely a boon for all so uh, i hope you guys are in it for the long haul because i'm just excited to to see this album and see what you guys do next Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. The band is Bad Wolves. The album Disobey is out on May 11th. Tommy Vex, Doc Hoyle, man. Thank you so much for coming by, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.